All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the video. I'm Tragedy Reigns, and you join me today in an installation video for Day's Dangerous Domain 2 for Skyrim. So, uh, what we're going to do is we've started off with a fresh install if you need to make sure if uh, you still have the files. In your app data local directory, you'll want to look for a Vortex updater and a Skyrim special edition uh, folder. You'll notice I have some marked out for other collections. Uh, that's the only way I'm able to actually uh, have multiple all-in-one collections. Uh, so you're looking for Skyrim Special Edition and Vortex Updater in the App Data Local folder. If you still have those folders, you have not completely deleted out Skyrim or Vortex yet. Uh, next, you want to go to the App Data Roaming directory, and down here you will find, I'll find one of my flagged ones for another collection. Uh, there's one there. You'll have a Vortex folder. Uh, so you'll need to make sure that that's gone as well, which you can see I've gotten rid of mine for the reinstall. All right, and then there's one more file. We need to go to the My Games directory. This is in your Documents My Games. And you'll be looking for a Skyrim Special Edition folder. You can clearly see all of my uh, backed up saves and files from other collections. Um, again, if you are going to attempt to run multiple collections like me, you have to keep these files separated. If they share any of these files, or indeed any files at all, you will break everything. Um, so, once you've made sure that those folders are gone after having uninstalled Vortex and Steam, you are fresh and good to go. So the very first thing you want to do is, of course, install Skyrim because you do need Skyrim in order to uh, have Vortex recognize anything and even configure it. So, we're going to install Skyrim. I'm going to install it on my D drive, which is a drive dedicated specifically to my Skyrim collections. Um, I have separate D drives for each collection. This keeps the core game files and core Vortex files separate. Um, it's actually easier than renaming the files, strangely enough. Um, so rather than rename and try to store multiple full copies of the modded game and uh, Vortex, I actually keep them on fully separate solid state drives. Um, this is a completely insane thing to do, and I do not recommend it. Um, find an all-in-one collection you like and stick with it. I'm driving myself nuts with it because, well, one, I am a little bit nuts, and two, because I'm trying to help get the uh, word out about some of these collections that I am showcasing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually cut the video, and I'll be back once Skyrim has installed, and I'll show you uh, the next steps in the installation. So I'll be back in a little while. Alright everyone, we're back. So Skyrim has uh, installed here. Let's just click play. Uh, detecting hardware and settings, blah blah blah. Defaults to ultra because my computer is easily good enough to handle that. And we're going to bump it up to 4K, which it only doesn't default to because the game wasn't originally intended to go above 1080. Uh, then you need to launch Skyrim and this will be the only time you launch Skyrim normally from this point on. Um, if Skyrim opens behind everything like it just did for me, just simply click on it and it'll go to it. Um, so here we go, we'll click download, and we'll get downloading. All right, so actually I just remembered how long this is going to take. I will be back momentarily. All right, everyone, so Anniversary Edition content has finished installing, and that is the Anniversary Edition DLC, not just the four uh, free uh, Creation Club uh, stuff that was given out for the Anniversary. You actually do need the Anniversary Edition. So now that that's installed and downloaded, we can close out of Skyrim. We will not be needing the regular Skyrim launcher again. Uh, so we can now minimize that. And I am going to... I'm actually going to get to it through here because it's 
quicker this way. Um, what do I need to find here? No, it is in here. Yes, it is in here. Okay, so I'm going to install ENV series. Um, now I'll show you actually um, how to get that file. Uh, so envdev.com, that will take you here, and this is the idiotic part that confuses just about everybody who tries to find env. Click news, makes no sense, but it's the only way to get the side panel as far as I'm aware. Click download, scroll to the bottom, click Elder Scrolls Skyrim Special Edition, and then at the bottom you will find all the different versions of env currently available. So download the 493, which I believe is the one I have. It is indeed. And then you will want to open that up with whatever archive program you have, WinZip, WinRAR, whatever the case is. And you need to go into wrapper version, and you need these two files, and only these two files. Do not copy any other files. So copy those files to clipboard and then we're going to open a new file explorer i'm going to go to my ddd uh, skyrim drive we'll open up steam library steam apps common skyrim and then paste those files here in the root directory not in the data directory if you paste them in the data directory you will have problems everything will go wrong and you'll complain and get laughed at so paste them in the root directory okay so that's enb installed skyrim will actually just launch with it it's pretty um insane in that regard um it kind of implies that the devs use enb to make their videos look good for trailers which might explain why they don't actually look that good when you first get a game I can't confirm that, but it is a suspicion I've been harboring for some time. Okay, so now we don't actually need these uh, folders anymore because um, everything's all going to be created in there. I just needed them open to show you guys that uh, where the files are located that you need to delete. Um, so now we need to install Vortex. So actually we need this open. We need to go to my transfers folder. And I'm just going to run a search for Vortex. Um, hello, search. Okay, can I get to it this way? All right, so we'll just install Vortex. Uh, you can download that from Nexus Mods. Um, and this is important. When, when installing Vortex, Install it on the same drive as Days Dangerous Domain 2 in Skyrim. Okay? You want all of the relevant data associated with the collection on the same drive. You definitely do not want any of it on your C drive or in your root Windows structure files. Uh, other than the folders that have to be there, which are the four I showed, showed you earlier. Everything else you want to keep on the same drive and not in program files or anything like that. So we'll install to D Vortex. So that's that taken care of there. Close this out. Okay, and Vortex is firing up. Uh, now, it is highly advised that you have premium uh, simply because, oh, I've got an update, uh, simply because uh, it extremely streamlines the download and install process. Um, it makes it a lot faster and uh, a lot easier. Um, so for newer users, especially premium is uh, recommended and for experienced users, premium is probably just a given. Um, does that have yet another update? Okay. Update again. So evidently I was using an old installer there. Um, I thought I had got grabbed the right one, but apparently not. Okay. Come on, Vortex. Fire back up.
Okay, so here we are. I'm going to allow them to collect usage data because I don't really care. Um, settings. You need to enable profile management. Do not forget that step. Um, so I try to do that one right away. For Days Dangerous Domain 2, you also want to disable Deploy Mods when enabled and Install Mods when downloaded. Those instructions are all scripted by day. Do not mess with this. It will mess everything up, you will have problems, and it will take ages to try and debug. It will probably be quicker to reinstall. So just pay attention to what you have to do according to the collection page because a lot of people are getting things wrong. Uh, another thing you can do to increase your download speeds is crank your download threads up to 10. Um, and then the downloads folder you also want on the same drive as uh, Vortex and Steam. So I'm just going to create this folder here. I'm going to call it Vortex Downloads. Oops. There we go, Vortex Downloads. And we'll just click Select Folder, we'll click Apply. All right, so that's that taken care of. So now we need to go over here to Games, and we need to tell it we have Skyrim. So you scroll down to find Skyrim. Where is it? It's somewhere around here. There it is, Skyrim Special Edition. So we'll tell it to manage that. Now, before you do anything else and forget about it, come here, make a new profile. Never, ever, ever use the default profile for any collection. I cannot stress that enough. We don't know why. It just does not work. All right, so switch to that profile. Make sure you've enabled it. And then check up here. Script extender not installed. You don't need to worry about that. The collection will do it. Mods can't be deployed. We can click fix. We can click next. We can click apply fix. We go up here. We click suggest because of where Vortex and the game are installed. It knows where we want that folder. So we click apply. You want hard link deployment. So we go there and click apply. Then we go up here. And we've got loose files may not get loaded. Just click fix. That's just a common thing with Vortex. It just always has that issue. And then deployment necessary. We can actually ignore because there's not really anything to deploy. Alternatively, you can deploy, because it's Vortex deploying Vortex. It's not doing anything. Um, all right. So, from this point, we have added ENB. We've installed, Sky, like we've installed Skyrim. We've installed the AE content. We've installed ENB. We've now got Vortex installed, and we have Skyrim set up. So, let's go back to settings, and we want to just double-check some of these settings make sure we've yep we've turned those off go over to mods make sure yep this is going to the right place downloads yep that's going to the right place and download threads are turned up excellent so now we can go back to our web browser here um, days dangerous domain 2 and we scroll down and we see what comes after enb vortex installation excellent Ah, I knew I was forgetting something, and this is a critical step. As you can tell here, it's labeled crucial step. So always, whenever you're about to make like a big step in the installation, make sure to double check the instructions because I quite often forget to turn off auto sort. So let's make sure we remember to do that now. Because the auto sort function works for a lot of collections, it does not work for Days Dangerous Domain 2. Um, all right, and that's probably just because of the sheer size of the collection. I mean, I don't think I found another collection on for, on Nexus that is this big. So impressive. Um, okay, so under mods and downloads, you need to set folder locations. Yep, we did that. Offsite mods. Okay, so I've got another page actually pulled up which is down here at the very bottom of the mods section of Days Dangerous Domain 2. And you will want to copy and paste these links. Clicking on them does not always work. Um, so you will want to copy and paste these addresses to get all these files. Um, these three, the top three, um, they haven't changed in some time, so keeping an archive of them is probably okay. The compendium down here, this is the biggest file and most important file of probably every single thing you're going to install. 
and this changes with basically every version update. So every time there's a new revision, if you're gonna do the update, you should also update the compendium. All right, so we're going to install uh, those files. Well, not so much install them, but transfer them to Vortex. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up here. We're gonna go to my, I think it's actually on production because I didn't have archives at the time. We're going to go in here and where is the folders? Folders, 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 folders. Where are my folders at? Here we go. Days Dangerous Domain 2. Okay, so we need High Poly Head. Uh, we need Tawoba Remastered. We need the Dastardly Day Compendium Malicious but Amazing Edition plus 3. And we need Sunjong Ninarim Collection 6.0. Uh, we want this on the downloads page. And then you can just click and drag your files into here. And this will give Vortex access to those files. Um, but you do not want to install any of them yet. That is important. Do not actually install any of them yet. The uh, collection will take care of that. But uh, for whatever reason, off-site mods, uh, Vortex has some serious issues with most of the time. So in order to avoid problems, off-site mods pretty much should always be installed this way. So we're just waiting for it to finish importing the compendium here. Um, in the meantime, let's uh, check for the next steps in installation. So after the offsite mods, we add the collection. All right, so we are really making some good progress. Um, and then, yeah, there's the post install stuff that we'll have to go through. Okay, so once Vortex is ready, I can start the actual collection install. And uh, then I can cut the video and come back when it's all installed up and do a launch test. So, come on. Hurry up. Like I said, this is probably the biggest and most important file, so it does take some time. Uh, maybe I should actually just cut the video here. Yeah, I'll cut the video here and... Um, We'll see where we're at in a few minutes. All right, we're back. So that's all uh, transferred over here. We've got these uh, offsite mods in. Uh, so now the next step is to actually install the collection itself. So I'm just gonna pop this up to the top. We can click Add to Vortex. And this will take a little bit getting everything queued up, but not too long. And very important is while you're installing any large collection, do not do anything in Vortex. Um, mucking about in Vortex can cause Vortex to make mistakes. And Vortex making mistakes will result in collection breakage. And nobody likes collection breakage. So here we go, no additional instructions. Uh, the install has actually been made very straightforward, all things considered. So we'll click install now. And I believe there might be a couple of uh, note type messages that pop up uh, while you're installing. I'm just gonna click this over to mods so I can actually see what it's doing. Um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Uh, but yeah, so I do believe there are a few messages that will pop up uh, at the beginning towards the beginning of the installation, and I think there are some at the very end as well. Uh, so I'm just going to let this actually get started to make sure if any uh, messages are going to pop up that I should let you know about. Is that guy rolled up in a carpet? Oh, it's a blanket. <laughs> All right, uh, come on. Checking dependencies, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
And once you've started the install, do not click anything up here. Um, the install needs to completely 100% finish before you can do anything else with Vortex. Oh, okay, so there we go, it started downloading, and you'll notice it already has a good amount of progress. Uh, that's because the off-site mods have been manually installed. So, it doesn't look like any immediate pop-ups with messages uh, are showing up. So I'm going to cut the video here, and I will pick it back up either at the end or when something interesting happens. Talk to you then. Alright everybody and welcome back. So as you can tell some time has passed and we've got the collection just about installed. Um, it does tend to stop at 99%. You'll notice a few red errors up here. That would be why, but do not click anything up here. Simply click the play button to resume and let it actually finish the install. This may actually stall out at 99% a couple of times. Just keep waiting for it to fully uh, stop doing what it's doing then click resume again until it actually goes through. Um, this is all to do with Vortex, nothing to do with the collection. Um, Vortex is basically getting far too many instructions and periodically misses some. Um, it's something that I think they're trying to fix uh, on Vortex's end because it's obviously not supposed to work like that. Um, so what? just uh, ignore all of that stuff up there, let it finish, and we'll pick this up once I've actually hit 100%. All right, everyone, so it did uh, hit 100% there, and uh, now it's asking us about the optional mods. This collection has one optional mod, which is not required to complete the collection. Oh, um, this just registered the external changes created by some of the custom rules, blah, blah, blah. Um, just click confirm when this does pop up. Um, don't muck about with any of this. Um, it's all done for you by data. So just, it made changes. Yes, that's fine. Okay. Now the optional mod is for uh, changing the uh, physics. Uh, just so that I can show it to you, I'm going to uh, click on install optional mods. Um, I use the default settings for physics as prescribed by Daydell. Um, so this is just, uh, there you go, config reinstaller. So we'll just click install. And I'm just going to go ahead with the default settings, but I will show you what kind of options you actually have access to. Looks like it's just doing some stuff up there. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to close that window. Yes, that's fine. Okay, so base CBPC. So you get the base and then you can choose the updates. So there's uh, performance improved, performance balanced, and performance limited. I recommend balanced. Um, I'm not 100% sure actually how the other options will affect the collection. So my advice, uh, at least the first time you set this up, uh, go with the default settings, see if you like it. If you don't, uh, get back into the uh, physics config uh, and uh, try to make any changes you think you might need. Although I would probably recommend you check at the Discord uh, for the collection as most information is available there. Uh, so here we're choosing the uh, base physics uh, on top of the... Uh, on top of the previous setting. Um, so again, I'm going to go with SMP and CBPC Lite, um, simply because that is the recommended. But uh, with these ones, if you mouse over them, you do get different information about uh, what they're for. So I am just going to go ahead to the next page there. Then here we go. We have all of the uh, custom physics for breasts. Um, so there are a lot of different options to go through in there. Um, I personally just like the, um, default settings that Daydell has. I don't find any sort of need to change them. Uh, so again, we're just going to click through that, but, uh, we can have a look at sort of what's there. So now we're on to belly button leg. Again, I'm just going to go with, uh, the standard 
but uh, you can get some uh, some information over there on the on the right, um, describing sort of what the different settings uh, are. But I mean, in this case, the name basically says it all. Uh, so we're just going to go on to the next one. Uh, again, I'm going with the defaults. Um, I haven't played around too much with the other options. Uh, I did try realistic at one point, and it seemed fine. But I would like to point out that previously I have had changed these options, and it had unexpected effects in the game. Um, I'm not really sure how to describe it other than if you've ever watched a wildlife documentary about orangutans, you may have witnessed the odd effect that I was having on uh, breasts in the game. So I just stick with the defaults now. Um, it was actually causing me seasickness. Uh, it was a bizarre, bizarre circumstance. <laughs> um, all right, so then we're here at the extra physics. So SOS physics, uh, honestly, not 100% sure how all of these work. Um, this does say it adds uh, bounce and some flop. Um, but I have no idea how those actually will interact in-game. And I'm not about to show them off on my video. Uh, vagina collision, I don't change. And I don't bother adding anal collision because I'm trying to show the collection in its most working state, and the Daydell's settings work. So, if you've changed any of these and all of a sudden the collection seems to be behaving oddly, it's probably something you've done during the install. Uh, so we're going to continue over here. Flower Girls and VRIK. Um, VRIK, only if you're actually using it, um, because it's defaulted off, I am assuming it is not included in the collection. And yes, I have not gone through all 1,900 odd mods. So I don't actually know everything that's in this collection. I am discovering it as we go. So then we can click finish. It'll finalize the install and the settings. There we go. Collection installation complete. So we can click done on that. It'll do a deploy. And once the deploy is done, I will show you the next critical step to make sure whether or not there are any more errors, and if there are, how to fix them. So, here we go. I'm just going to end the recording now, and I'll be back in a minute when this is finished deploying. All right, and we're back. Um, so, it has finished deploying. You'll notice we still have all these uh, errors up here. Ignore them. Uh, first thing you want to do is click Plugins. Make sure this list has actually loaded. If this list hasn't loaded, Vortex hasn't actually properly checked everything. Um, so, what we're going to do now is, I'm actually going to X out these messages, uh, because we just don't need them. The unresolved conflicts we're going to deal with uh, in a little bit. Uh, so, here we've got to uh, select all. I use Control A to do that. I'm sure there are other ways to go about it. And with every single one selected, without any filters activated, so you want to make sure 100% of the active plugins are selected, and you need to mark as light. This can uh, sometimes take a little bit, uh, but your numbers should be around 253 active. 254 active is okay, it just means one got missed. But if you're at 255 or above, Vortex basically won't work. Uh, and then light over here should indicate 1,957. Why that's displayed in that particular order, I'm not sure. I think it's actually active 253 light, and then 1957, which it should probably have regular or something tagged on that. But anyway, that, that, that's just me rambling. Once your numbers are similar to that by clicking uh, mark as light, uh, you're good on that front. Uh, so I'm just going to double check the references because the post install instructions are rather important. Well, actually, every single word on this page is important. Um, I've just read it so many times, I've only really got to check these last few places. So here you can even see that uh, that QRVA or QVRAE or whatever it is, that error has been persistent for a long time. 
and it's a problem with Vortex. It's just nothing we can do about it. Um, okay, so here we go. Do, 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 do. Plugin section. We've marked them as light. Um, oh yes, we need to check for the disabled plugins. That's right. So now we can go over here and we need to double check all of the disabled plugins versus uh, the plugins we actually have disabled. So these are the only ones that are supposed to be disabled. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say I probably have too many. Um, so Northern Roads is on there. Uh, Pan NPCs DB, yep. Black Thief, yep. Uh, Bijan NPCs. Bijan War Maidens, Bijan Wives, RDO USSEP patch, yep. Pan NPCs DB. Pretty sure I saw that. Yep, there we go. Uh, Pan Freya. Yep. Uh, Pan Blackbriar, Pan Wicked Witches. Yep. Uh, Warrior Women, yep. Shield Sisters, yep. Uh, Serana, yep. Sovngarde, yep. Valerica, yep. Pan NPCs ESP, yep. Pan NPCs males, yep. Marvelous Miners, oh, yep, that's in there. Lethal Ladies is in there. Males 2 is in there. Devoted Dames, yep, that's in there. Uh, Brelina, I hope I'm pronouncing that right because it's probably someone's name. Uh, yep. Dark Dreams, yep. Uh, SOS Physics Manager. Uh, that does not show up in the list. However, it is always disabled for me. And I'm assuming that's because I do the optional mod. I'm guessing this is the original ESP that's been disabled because I installed the extra mod to reconfigure it. Um, that's the only thing I can think of as to why I have this one extra uh, plugin. Uh, however, it does not adversely affect uh, the collection having it uh, in that list of disabled mods. So I assume it's because of the optional mod. Um, so the next thing you want to do to make sure all of these messages are actually accurate is close Vortex. Yeah, that, that, that's a critical, critical step in my opinion. Close Vortex because you are about to check if there are any errors on startup, because when it initializes your profile and the collection, now is when it will determine which are false positives and which are actual positive, like returns on there being a problem. So we look at this, we've got a message there. It looks like it's loaded. Let's click over to plugins. It hasn't loaded yet. So let's wait. Now that that has loaded, any relevant messages up here will show up here. If you don't click on the plugins tab and this page doesn't load, not all warning messages will show until after you exit the game. And something I want to point out, if Vortex doesn't see the errors and you launch the game, and then it sees the errors the next time, it will not let you launch the game. Which basically means anything you did in the game is moot, because um, that file is completely buggered. Um, so... We've now checked, we still have unresolved file conflicts, okay, because we know this is an actual positive return. Now, this is something I've discussed with Daydell. Uh, we have no real idea why um, this conflict happens uh, beyond Vortex seems to miss a rule. Um, Vortex is basically getting 100% custom instructions for this install, and it just seems to miss some, uh, no matter how many times the code is rechecked and repatched. There are just certain things it just seems to miss. So we're going to click Show. We're going to click Hide Resolved. And this is critical. The NAT ENB ESP Weather Plugin version 3.1.1. This is what's causing all the problems. It goes before everything. Problem solved. Click Save. Wait for this to finish. There we go. No more alerts. So just for good measure, let's close Vortex one more time and fire it back up. 
just to make sure it doesn't find any new conflicts now that that one's been resolved. Okay, it's loaded. Click over to plugins. That's loaded. Still no warnings. At this point, your collection should be basically good to go. However, we're not ready to launch yet. So, what we need to do now is, I'm just going to double check that I get the last few steps here in the right order. Um, blah, 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 blah. Ah, yes, here's the uh, identifier numbers to make sure you've got the correct numbers. And here's the explanation about uh, 255 being sort of the limit. Uh, okay, then, ah, we need to sort them. That's right, because auto sort is something that we can't let Vortex do. So then click sort now. Don't re enable auto sort. Click sort now and just let that do its thing. It'll take quite a bit of time as there are a lot of plugins. So I am just going to cut the video and I will be back in a bit. All right, so we're back actually a lot quicker quicker than I anticipated. Uh, that sorted much, much, much quicker than the estimated 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, some people have reported even longer times than that. Uh, so this all actually is looking good so far. This is also click collections. You can see if there's been an update. Um, a number of times I've gotten the collection installed and during installation an update was released. <laughs> so uh, we're going to, we've finished sorting. Now we need to go on to Nemesis Engine. So what we need to do is we need to go to our Skyrim drive. We need to go to Steam Library, Steam Apps Common Skyrim. And we need to go in, oops, that's my mouse not letting me click and drag properly. We need to go into data, I believe. Is it data? No. No, it's not data, is it? It has to be data. Oh, I'm looking for a, a folder, not, not the executable. That's why I'm sorry about that. I kind of potatoed there. All right, so then we launch Nemesis Unlimited Behavior Engine. Yes, that's fine. That's normal. Click OK, click OK. And now we need to enable all of the options uh, from the collection page. So... Here we go, we need Mage Lock, we need Book of Shadows, we need both Precision, we need Extra Drawing Animations, we need Combat Gameplay Overhaul, Payload Interpreter, oh, pay Payload Interpreter, sorry I'm having problems with my hands due to the arthritis. Um, it's becoming very, very painful to actually use my mouse. Uh, we'll activate, there's three true directional movement. There we go. We want all three of those, and then Vitrium. Okay, then we click Update Engine. Now this process does normally work without uh, any issues. Uh, trying to launch Nemesis Engine, though, occasionally does have some issues. Uh, but I will show you how to deal with those when they happen. Okay, so engine update complete. So now what we want to do is launch Nemesis Behavior Engine. Now there is a chance that it will just work the first time you do that. Uh, sometimes it uh, fails for whatever reason, um, and you need to close the program, relaunch it. Uh, and if that happens, I will show you uh, the next sort of thing you can do to uh, try and get Nemesis working again. Okay, there we go. Failed to generate behavior. So that did not work. So what you want to do is close the application, launch it again, re-update the engine. Launch 
launch nemesis behavior engine. And if it fails this time, I'm going to show you something that I've figured out tends to work. Like nine times out of ten it'll work. Um, but it is not a recommended thing to try. Um, okay, that actually worked. Behavior generation completed. So basically, if that fails after restarting Nemesis, enable character behaviors enhanced, update the engine, launch the engine, it will fail. Deselect character behaviors enhanced, update the engine, launch behavior engine. It will work nine times out of ten. However, I want to emphasize that has never been recommended to me by anyone. I have no idea why it works, and I don't know if I'm doing any damage by doing it. So please check with curators of collections if you have any bizarre problems. Uh, but as the behavior generation is complete, we can close Nemesis Engine, and we can move on to the next phase. All right, let's see here. Ah, installing ENB presets. So here is where the rest of my uh, DDD2 files come in. So what we need to do is go back to the Skyrim root directory. And we want to start with patrician ENB. This is um, the base of the uh, preset that I use, um, recommended by Daedal. And I'm now also going to override some of it by using Daedal's custom Patrician ENB uh, cinematic version, which is, in my opinion, um, one of, oops, son of a, my mouse, sorry, between that and my arthritis, I'm having a real hard time. Okay, and replace, there we go. Uh, so that's a custom uh, setting for this ENB created by uh, Daedal. And it works really, really well. Um, I have noticed sometimes, though, that night can be very, very dark. Um, but I think that has to do with the, like, the same effects that make colors and light and stuff more vivid as well. It has the same effect, I think, on the darkness. Um, and then down here, if you need to customize uh, game settings and resolution, do not launch the Elder Scrolls Skyrim launcher. Launch the program Beth I and I. Um, I don't have a copy of it downloaded at the moment, but you can click that link, download it, and this will allow you access to the game's configuration. So you can set it up for windowed mode, borderless, full screen anti aliasing, that kind of thing. So you have a lot of customizable options if you use Beth I and I. Um, I don't tend to change anything, so I don't tend to use it. Um, all right, so the ENB preset is installed. We've gone over Beth I and I. Everything should be good to go. So what we're going to do is I just like to be in the dashboard screen for this. And always launch using the blue button for SKSE in Vortex. Don't try to launch this any other way. I don't know what other methods work. I just know that some other methods will bugger everything. So always launch using this blue button. Okay, so here we are. Game is loading up, as you can see in the top left. ENB just automatically detects. It doesn't actually have to be properly installed to it or anything. I've even tested that on just a base install of Skyrim, and it still seems to launch with it. So. And here we go. Game loading screen is up. Game loading screen is finishing? Please? Not really sure. Well, I guess it is the first time launching with the collection, so the game's probably got to generate a bunch of stuff. Hmm. 
All right, I don't know why this is taking quite so long. Uh, oh, information on the screen, that tells me it is in fact still processing and not frozen. So we should be just about ready to hit the main menu. Any day now, game. There we go. And here we are, Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. So that's Days Dangerous Domain 2 successfully installed and ready to go. I hope you've all enjoyed the video. I hope this has been informative and helped some of you get this collection installed properly. And that's all for me for tonight. I'm going to bed. Have a great night. Bye.